Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Masters in Fitness Business Podcast, where you get to stand on the shoulders of giants. And today, that is true. You get to stand on the shoulders of a giant man, my good buddy, Tim Lyons with uh, Pulse Fitness and ProFit Marketing Solutions down in Scottsdale, Arizona, and the largest, most buffed man in the STS. Um, so now he's got his 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 father time beard growing and and everything. For the, those of you guys watching the Be Live forecast um, broadcast, you can see the video component and watch. You know, uh, Tim flex his muscles and um, create that body language that is that additional communication component. If you're listening on the audio, then uh, just sit back and enjoy as Tom, uh, Tim is going to roll out some real. Um, knowledge bombs for you. So Tim, welcome to the show, man. Hey, thanks for having me, man. Yeah, no, I, I always love having you on the show because every time I have you on the show, I learn something new, you know, because I think I know fitness marketing um, and I don't think I'm alone. I think there's a lot of fitness business owners out there who's like, oh, I know fitness marketing because I have a Facebook account and I have an Instagram account. And then I, I talk to you and you start getting into the weeds on this stuff, on what really works. And then uh, it's like my mind goes blank because you're just blowing me away. I mean, just yeah. before we started recording, you were talking about some stuff and I was like, holy shit, that's some in-depth stuff because that's what you do full time. Most people myself included, I run my business full time. So if you ask me about my business, I can get in the weeds about my business, my clients, right. retention, all of that stuff. But your full time job is fitness business marketing, not marketing, but fitness business marketing. So you know, know that niche and you own that niche. Uh, so share with our listeners the, 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 the importance of that. Well, yeah, good point. Because yes, while I do own a gym first, it's kind of not necessarily on the back burner, but I'm not as involved in the gym business as I am in the marketing side and profit side. So yes, I, I know what's going on over at the, on the pulse fitness side, but I'm over here in the weeds, like you said, digging in deep and trying to find the latest and greatest strategies more than tactics, but strategies to, to grow both pulse fitness as well as our clients, gyms, as well as yours. Right. So mm -hmm. And there's a lot of uh, moving targets out there. Things change very, very quickly in this game. And yeah, I've been fortunate enough to stay on top of it. I, I'm really a student of the game of marketing and I really enjoy it. I love what I do. I do. Yeah. And um, that's one thing I forgot to mention at the at the intro is that you actually are a fitness business owner. That's what, how you started out. You own Pulse Fitness and you guys do small group, large group um personal training down there and it's what you your club's about eight thousand square feet yep so like seven okay. nine nine seven let's go okay yeah, yeah and, and it's a nice place it's got a juice bar and uh it's it's a nice facility and you guys do well because you have a marketing machine feeding it and you have systems inside um and you have a good staff running it where you can just kind of have a weekly staff meeting and stay on top of your pulse fitness, uh, which is great. But then you also are able to follow your passion, which is the marketing side. Now you talked about, you touched briefly on strategies versus tactics. Yes. What, what does that mean? Okay. Well, think about tactics as like a one Facebook ad or a chat bot. And that those are tactics. Uh, but the overall strategy, I guess somebody put it to, to in a, are really easy to understand terms a while back that I heard that really makes sense because I, I played football. Mm -hmm. The playbook would be the strategy of your marketing. The actual plays in the playbook are called tactics. Those are the tactics on the overall strategy. So you've got plays, which are the Facebook ad that you're running or the email campaign that you're running or the many chat bot, the, the chat bot that you're running. But the strategy is, what happens when somebody gets into your funnel or into your ecosystem? What's happening with that person if they don't buy right now? And there's a big kind of line right down the middle when it comes to marketing where you've got on one side, you've got direct response style marketing. And then on the other side, you have a branding style marketing. Direct response, for those of you that don't know, it's here's my offer, buy my thing. 
right now. Slap you in the face. Limited time. We're, we're only taking 10 people. It ends tomorrow. That's direct response, direct response. Over here, branding is, you know, who we are, our culture, educational, who, you know what I mean? Creating yourself as the local expert. That's an overall branding strategy. So they should be tied together. But unfortunately, what everybody is doing is one tactic, which is Facebook ads and direct response, which is buy my stuff. And you burn out your market real quick doing that. Uh, how do you explain that? How do you burn out your market? Okay, well, think about think about uh, people in your marketplace that are just living their lives. And all they see from you is buy my challenge, buy this thing, buy that, buy this, but never getting any value from you. Like So, so really, the only people that are, are going to react and take action on something like that are the ones that are already ready to purchase something, which is the smallest piece of the demographic. Right. They already know who you are. They, they maybe need to lose weight and they know that you're the place for them. Then an offer comes across their face and then it makes sense. But what about all those other people that don't know who you are? Maybe you're overweight. They're, they don't know what to do. Or maybe they just have aches and pains and they don't even know that being overweight is causing them the aches and pains. Well, that's the large piece of the pie that nobody's going after. Nobody like everybody's like buying my stuff now. But think about all the other people you can be getting up into uh, your ecosystem, like I said before, and then you got pretty much an unlimited, you know, demographic to go after. Yeah. So that goes into that branding strategy that you're talking about, where right. you're where you're educating and, and position yourself as the expert in the marketplace, the kind of go to person. Absolutely. So yeah. a lot of people are like, how do you do that? Well, it's really, we call it content to conversion. It's like a strategy what we're doing right now. And, and it comes, a lot of it comes down to educational videos. And videos is important here because of the tools and things that you can do with a video that you can't just with just say a blog post or an ad or something. So I'll just give you a great example. Think about, like I said, the people that don't necessarily know what to do to get the weight off. Maybe they know that they're overweight and they know that there's a lot of options out there for them. There's Weight Watchers or HCG Diet, or maybe they're just going to go for a run and get a running group. We all know that fitness and nutrition, what we do and what you do and what your listeners do is the answer, but they don't know that. And so how do you get somebody that's just needs to lose weight, but they don't know what the right approach is going to be? Well, videos, videos where you're explaining what you do in your gym, uh, and you put it out there online with a nice, consistent brand. We use the, you know, we use a, a couple different softwares, but we put a nice frame around it. We put the words on the screen because a lot of people aren't watching the videos with sound on. And one of the greatest tools that you have at your fingertips, especially if you're in the Facebook game, is you can put a video out there and then put people that are watching those videos into a little mini bucket, which is a custom audience. And so you create a video. You send it out there to the broad population or whatever, your your broad audience, and then maybe a tenth of those people are actually watching it. Well, those people, those that tenth of your audience is going to go into a little bucket, and guess what? You're going to start retargeting those people with something else, maybe another video, maybe an offer. It just depends on your strategy. Yeah, um, man, there's so much to unpack there uh, that I want to get into, but I want to take a step back. Um, okay. cause before we were, uh, recording, we were talking about the importance of diversification of your marketing because right. a while back, Facebook and Instagram shut down and a lot of people, uh, put all of their eggs in that basket. Mm -hmm. So you want to share about the importance of number one, the changes in Facebook and Instagram, uh, from a marketing standpoint, yeah. uh, and how that, um, should really push you to diversify your marketing efforts and two, what is that what should that look like exactly okay well great point because this is very current current events right so facebook mm -hmm. dropped out uh everybody was scrambling and this is something i've known for three years i just knew how hard people were going into facebook as they should it, it's been the the best way to market your business for the last at least four years straight mm -hmm. I mean, there's really no other thing that's giving you a greater, greater return. But maybe, you know, three years ago, you put in a dollar and you get back $20. Now you're putting in a dollar and you get back five. And it's still 
great, good. You're getting a five X return keep moving forward. But what happens with that whole channel is gone one day. And it may be a lot of people that I tell this to like, Hey, if Facebook disappears, what are you going to do? Well, somebody said, well, they're going to not disappear. Would they deny it? Or something else will pop up, right? That's, that's what they're thinking. Well, it doesn't exist yet. What do you do? Uh, the first thing I would tell people is maybe Facebook won't disappear, but what if, and we've seen it already, they just don't like you marketing your fitness business anymore. They just say anything fitness related, health, wellness, that's done. That's almost like selling alcohol or whatever, whatever their bands are. Yeah. I don't even know. Cigarettes. But it changes yeah. daily. Like they don't, yeah, you, just can't, you can't promote tobacco, right? Whatever. So now they decide health and wellness is out. So now you're really screwed. Yeah, that could absolutely happen. It's very realistic. So something that we've always talked about, and you've heard me talk about, is having multiple poles in the water at all times. Multiple poles meaning multiple tactics in overall strategy. And if you've ever been fishing on deep sea, which is something I really, really love, I need to get back out there. Uh, yeah, you'll have four or five huge lines out there. And maybe one of them hits, the other two don't, and then another two or three hit, you hit a school of fish. It's the same thing with your marketing strategies. So diversification from off of Facebook, maybe going offline, getting face-to-face -face with people, maybe doing some networking, having joint venture partnerships with, with local businesses. Uh, maybe you know, even though email marketing is a little, you know, on the downward slide, every time we run an email campaign, we get sales, keep that in your portfolio. Uh, using things like Scipio and text messaging and then chat. Bot. Like there's so many different things. And so that's, that's why we created that, the GPS soft platform and you've seen it, right? Um, we've got over 50 strategies in that GPS and that's where people should be going to diversify their marketing efforts. It's really important. Yeah, absolutely. And just so people know, and I think it's really important because you and I both know um, that there's so many scam artists out there. You know, I, I can't tell you, um, I, I recently started uh, marketing um, my fitness business and a podcast on LinkedIn, you know, uh, just yep. to get a different demographic. And I get so many solicitations from, like, literally, there was a, a kid who just took a ClickFunnels seminar. Yeah. Yeah, and he's okay. like, I, you, know, you know, I'm a marketing expert. No, you're not. You know, mm -hmm. uh, there's so many, so much fakery out there. So you own Pulse Fitness and you run all of your marketing strategies to make Pulse Fitness run. So right. and Pulse Fitness is clear seven figures a year. Am I correct? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So your marketing strategies and, and tactics work for sure. So um let's let's talk about that we were talking about the the diversification you know uh google ads uh guerrilla marketing efforts um mm -hmm. part you know partnerships with local business in addition to the facebook but um the thing um that i want to get into and, and i totally just lost my train of thought but yeah. um um when you were talking about the importance of diversification was um how to put, oh, oh, I know what it was. Yeah. So you do all of this. You're going out to local businesses. You're working with uh, other business on a referral basis and you're doing your, your social media marketing. What most people neglect and what you do a really good job of not only doing, but pointing out is that once you get those leads, what the fuck do you do with them? Because a lot of people put a lot of people will get leads and they plug them into a broken system inside their club. So talk about that a little bit. Yeah. Well, let's let's circle all the way back to the the gurus that you're getting hit up with. Okay. And, mm -hmm. and I, this is this strikes a chord with me because I see this and 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 I really I'm I'm on the gym owner side mm -hmm. and I just see what's happening and it really it doesn't it just I'm looking out for for you. I'm looking out for the gym owners out there. So I, I'm friends with a lot of these guys just by default. They get friend requests and everything else. And they, they like to boast about um, cost per lead. Okay. Like, hey, we got $2 cost per lead, 70 cent cost per lead. And then I start looking at it like, what is it that, that the lead is opting in for? What is what creates the lead? And here's here's what's out there right now. So there's a lot of things that generate a lot of leads. So let's let's if I was to approach you as a marketer and you're a gym owner 
and say, Hey, Jim, listen, buddy, I've got a campaign. It's going to generate you dollar fifty leads, man. You want in? You're like, hell yeah, let's do it. All right. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to create a campaign that gives away uh, a free membership for everybody that opts in. And we're going to get a ton of leads. Are you, do you, do you want to do it? And you're going to be like, well, what do you mean? I'm giving away like a free membership or it's a drawing or if it's like this, everybody under the sun is going to opt in for that. Of course, you're going to get 75 cent leads, but those leads will never become a client of yours because they're opting in from some type of sweepstakes giveaway contest. It's the most absurd thing. And I want gym owners out there to be more educated in what the fact the things are being marketed for you. If somebody was marketing a program at your gym for an annual membership and it was $5,000 and you got $1.50 leads, you better throw a million dollars at that campaign because that's awesome. That'll never happen. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. if, if you put, so there's a, a moving, I guess a, uh, inverse relationship between the offer and the cost per lead. So if the offer is free, the cost per lead is low. If the offer is paid, the cost per lead is high. It's just how it is, right? It's just like if I'm going to give you something for free, you're going to raise your hand. But if I tell you it's $200, you're like, eh, let me think about it. Would you rather have less leads that are more qualified or more leads that are less qualified? In fact, not even close to qualified. If somebody's going in for a drawing, that's not even a qualified person that doesn't make mm -hmm. any sense so okay be educated get that's out of the way let me get that off the table uh now if somebody so, is generating so, leads let yeah, me let me ask know. you a quick question when you say qualified lead define that qualified lead to me number one is somebody in your area right let's call it five miles ten miles away from your facility so they're they're at, you know they fit your demographic and they have the intention of continuing or starting a fitness program with your gym, not looking for something for free, not with any, no intention other than trying to win a prize. Those are people aren't qualified. And I know this because we've tried everything here, right? I can tell you, we, we've never done the sweepstakes, but I can tell you if I did it, we're going to get a thousand leads for a dollar each and one person's going to answer their phone. That's it. I mean, like it's a waste of time. Gotcha. So there's some things that we do that we can leverage the low cost or free marketing strategy to turn a, a free person into a call, qualified buyer or qualified lead well before they show up at your facility. That's just something that we're doing and it works great. So yeah, we can get cheap leads or cheap or lower cost leads, but they become very highly qualified leads after we put them through a process. Okay. And so, so, you know, it's funny. I don't know. Anyways, long story short, that's that's what you need to be aware of as a as a uh, person purchasing marketing from a company. What's the campaign? What is the offer? Okay. Now, what happens when you do get some qualified leads and you put them into a broken machine? Yeah, they you end up not converting anybody. So, mm -hmm. having a sales or a process and sales uh, you know system in place is as important as any cheap lead that you're ever going to get. Like you said before, if you get a ton of leads, but you don't do anything with them, what's really, what's the point? You got a, a bunch of names and numbers on a, on a sheet. Great. Right. How does that relate? How does that convert into actual cash in your bank account? Well, you gotta, you gotta nurture those people. You gotta get on the phone with them. You gotta outreach outbound everything to get those people in. That's why we created our sales training because what that's what was happening. We were creating the, we were getting these great campaigns and gym owners didn't know what to do or they didn't have a process in place. So we've created a four week training. I, mean, I won't talk about it, but it, it turns that into a system for you and your gym. And we've seen great results and people are now understanding what to do when they get leads from campaigns, right? Gotcha. Okay, no, that's really, really important. I think a lot of fitness business owners really miss that boat. And like you said, they fall prey of like, oh, I got you know 27 leads and you know, two days, you know, and like you said, they're not qualified leads and then they don't have a way of putting those leads into a system to convert them, to get them in, uh, put them on, get them on trial, then close them once they're in on trial and then retargeting the ones that don't, you know, um, initially respond, all of those things. They just kind of, they've got this kind of analog paper trail on their desk and like so many things like just fall through the cracks. Yeah. 
and they're busy and they don't have time. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to get on the phone or nobody answers the phone. They don't have other ways to communicate other than maybe email. Maybe sometimes they're not even collecting an email. Maybe it's just a phone number, whatever. Uh, yeah, you got to work. Unfortunately, yeah. it does, people that are not going to line up with their credit card in hand, just hand you money. You got to do some work to get them to, to, to take action, right? We wish. Yeah. We wish. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, uh, okay. And then you were talking about we, before we started recording. So we talked about uh, not putting all your eggs in the social media basket, diversifying your efforts and having multiple uh, strategies um, for mm -hmm. that. Um, I'm sorry, tactics for that, uh, that feed into your overall strategy. Uh, and then we were also talking about website, how website and SEO is making a comeback. I really feel like it is. Uh, let's think about the style of lead that comes in on a website versus a direct response social media campaign, right? It goes to Google, they have a need. They know they need to lose weight. They don't know what to do. They type in best training facility in Dallas, in Miami, in Greensboro, wherever you're at. Or near me, and yeah. Near mm -hmm. me, that's a great mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. Gyms near me, best gyms near me, best personal trainer near me. Those are all great keyword search terms. Boom, you're top of the list. Mm -hmm. Well, let me check you out. That person goes in, clicks your website. The website's beautiful. It tells them, it speaks to them. It tells them exactly what they want to know, what they want to hear. They see pic pictures of people on your website that look and act and feel like them. They look at your trainer bios. Your trainers are educated. Everybody's got polo shirts on, clean cut, whatever. They look at your facility. It's clean. It's got great testimonials. Wow, this is the place I want to be at. They click the lead form. They put their information in. Their phone rings two minutes later because your fitness director just called them. Hey, I saw that you had info, you know, you had interest in our facility. When can you come in? Blah, blah, blah. Boom. That person's an inbound lead. They're already qualified themselves because your website did the job. They inbound search you. 99% of the time, unless you screw it up, they're buying something and they're buying something big. And we love inbound website leads. But what if you don't have a website? And you just been going on Facebook because that's what people told you. You don't need a website anymore. Well, Facebook disappears. You don't own your website page or your Facebook page. You don't own that social media page. They do, but you do own your website. You're protecting yourself because you got this website that's generating leads. It's search engine optimized. You've done all the work and it's, and it's bringing in really high quality leads, right? Then on the other side is, hey, buy my stuff on social media. They're on there to look at pictures of the dog over there, the neighbor's house, the, the, the kid's birthday party. And then they slap up. Uh, some guy does a backflip and is like, hey, we're doing a challenge. Come on in, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's just got to be more professional. I don't know. It just It's just this whole weird thing that's ha it's been happening for a while, you know, and people jump on the bus and then they jump off. And Yeah. But that's that's why websites are important. Still yeah, to yeah, I I couldn't agree with you more. Um, I had a call with um, my business coach uh, Thomas Plummer, and yep. he he helped me identify that I definitely had a marketing problem. So I hopped on um, my Google site. So I Google my site, and um, and my Google presence was fucking terrible, just sauce. terrible. We, I mean, beyond weak sauce. It was just. Yeah. Oh, horrific i was embarrassed um uh, and you know i had one bad review which brought us way down so i'm like okay so then i i got on it you know updated it i started running ads on google uh i uh, you know just updated the pictures the text the ads um i started soliciting uh clients for uh reviews on google five star reviews i would give them a protein Beautiful. shake if they uh gave a five star a protein shake and a high five is what we told them Beautiful. And it got and it got my Google ranking, uh, the reviews way up, um, and then also my Google presence, and then my um, the the search um, people searching us went way up, and then that directs them right to the website, like you said, and then we started getting more direct inbound leads to the website. So you have to pay attention to those things one hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. So, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, you know, having a pretty website, but that tells people that, that, you know, that that's the place they need to be is everything. Yes. Google reviews, Yelp reviews, as much as we don't like to say it, Yelp, right. Mm -hmm. You gotta have great reviews out there. 
So how do you do it? So you, you pretty much gave somebody a, an incentive to do it. At our facility, we put into place an entire rewards program just the whole thing. And part of the rewards programs is they get points for reviews. We don't tell them, give us a five-star review, although they do. Uh, we just say, hey, write us a great write us a review and we'll give you whatever, 10 points or 15 points, I forget what it is. And we've got a ranking system in here. Our clients here, at least, aren't monetarily motivated, meaning we can't give them money and prizes and stuff to get them to move. What they are motivated is by status we found out when we had a a board with a bronze silver gold platinum all the way up to hall of fame legend is actually the top that they battled for points they want to be they want their face and their name up on that board because it's in the hallway and they're like going nuts just to get points and that's why we put the rewards program into place and since we've done that here it's changed our entire culture people are doing the things we want them to do like reviews and checking in and giving us referrals and it's growing our business out of out of control because status that's what they want yeah and then that also how does that affect your retention numbers well, it's, it's very early to tell. We just started in January and here we are in just still a couple months into the year, right? March. Um, so far, so good. I can tell you our referrals are way up. Our spending at the point of sale up front is way up because they get points for every $3 they spend, they get a point, stuff like that. It's all built in and th that's all great. Re Retention is going to be over time. We'll be able to tell. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm hoping that because they see their name on the board and there's, there's reasons for them to stay, that they're going to stay. You know, we just want to keep treating them right. And, you know, we just hope for the best on that. I think it's going to work. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and uh, to me, that's just a great example of why you have to diversify because it's not just one thing. Like you said, it's not just one tactic. It has to be an overall strategy that flows together uh, mm -hmm. in order to have a successful business. And it has to be consistent and over time. So let's let's uh, circle back to. um where you were talking about your um, uh, content to conversion. Walk us through that. Okay, content to conversion is just a way to go after the broad spectrum of the cold audience that maybe isn't ready to buy right now. You're planting the seeds of who you are. You're the local expert. If somebody ends up deciding that personal training or training is a great idea for them, then you're going to come to top of mind and you can do other things built into this with some lead magnets and stuff like that. But really the overall strategy is video after video after video. And really the way you set this up is you draw a horizontal line on a piece of paper on the left-hand side, you got a sad face and on the, all the way to the right, you got a happy face and you draw an arrow like from sad hats, sorry, sad to happy. Then you put your name of your gym on the top of the page pulse fitness whatever you know fitness quest whatever the thing the names are and then in what are the things that uh people wh why do people get results with you over your competitors what are the things in your gym that that deliver the results is it your specific training that you do there is it your nutrition protocol is it your supplementation is it your accountability is it your facility is it your community whatever you pick the top three or four things the reasons why people get from sorry sad to happy what are the things that are in your gym those are your called pillar pieces of content and let's just say for ease of this discussion nutrition the reason that people get results with you over your competitors is because you've got great nutrition plans okay so now you start creating subcategories of nutrition and these are again videos and these are between 60 seconds and four or five minute videos. And you talk about, let's just say you believe in paleo, paleo, paleolithic diet is the way you run your operation. And so everything that you talk about in these videos is about how beneficial the paleo diet is, why you do the paleo diet, some meal plans that look like that they're on the uh, paleo diet, maybe some recipes, then you maybe go into some supplementation, you know, that's all pillar content and you're doing little 60 to four minute videos. You brand them up, you put them out on Facebook twice a week, every Tuesday, Thursday, or Monday, Wednesday, whatever you decide you're going to do. And you just push out content over content. You're just pushing it out there. Now these things live online. 
right? So they're going to stay out there. They're going to get shared. You can then start running traffic to those. So maybe five, 10 bucks a day and you put video views. Facebook's got a great new, um, uh, I guess, conversion or whatever uh, objective called through view on video. And basically a through view is, the, is their kind of way that they're going to go against YouTube, which is on YouTube, you don't pay for 30 seconds unless somebody watches 30 seconds on Facebook. You're just, you only pay for somebody that's watching 15 seconds. So it's called a through view. Okay. You push through views, you get people watching your videos, you create custom audiences. Now, people that are watching there, they've raised their hand. They decided that this is a piece of content that they want to learn about. You put them into a custom audience, you start creating subcategories and you start retargeting those people into a long, long-term strategy. Again, this isn't, this isn't one of those, Hey, buy my thing right now ads. It's a, it's an educational. So it's, it's more, we're going to try to give versus ask, right? That's the mm -hmm. whole putting deposit into your community, putting deposits. And then when you decide you're ready to, to offer them something, you're asking for a withdrawal. You can't continue just to ask for stuff all the time without people being turned off over time, right? So mm -hmm. that's just the way you counteract that. It's a longer term strategy. And a lot of people don't have the patience for it, the budget for it, or the ability to wait that long. But the ones that do are going to win over the long term, 100%. Believe that again, a lot to unpack, uh, unpack there. So, you know, just a simple thing like through view, I ne had never heard of that. And the fact that you yeah. know that again, it, it, uh, it's just one of those things that, uh, makes it worthwhile having you on the show, but also, uh, using you from a marketing standpoint for sure. Um, yeah. okay. And then, so you talked about faith, your three pillars of content. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, pushing out those videos and, you know, every once in a while boosting them, if they get a good response, then boosting those videos, mm -hmm. um, so that you can increase the, the penetration. Um, the one thing I did want to talk to you about, um, cause you talked to me about a while ago when I started it is starting, a, a Facebook group again, in a way to, uh, and again, it's not, it's, it's content to conversion, right? So it's an educational type thing. So for mine, it was, the Facebook group I started was called Healthy Living St. Louis, Perfect. where I just put out like healthy recipes, you know, tips, um, solutions, invited other, you know, leaders from the St. Louis community to contribute to that page. Anybody um, has any questions, they can come on to that page. And then that helps position me as the, the expert. For you, you did it with marketing talk through fitness professionals, you know, and that's been real successful for you. So you want to walk the uh, listeners through that process? Yeah. So this is basically in a nutshell, Facebook group marketing. So at the gym level, yeah, healthy living St. Louis, healthy living Chicago, healthy living Manhattan. And really the point of having a free group like that is just, you know, have people in your town, city, whatever it is, <coughs> join that group because they're interested in living healthy. Mm -hmm. Those are, you're basically cultivating your own customers within a group like that. So this would be one strategy that I agree with that we yet have not done is because it takes a lot of time. But on the marketing side, absolutely. We have marketing talk with fitness professionals. You know, it's about 700 members or whatever right now, all gym owners. And I'm very, very strict in that group because there's a lot of, like you said, a lot of um, people that are trying to grab business. I screen every person that comes in and I deny and ban more people that try to get in that group than I let in. That's because I want to create this, this culture inside that group. So I'm really, really, it's really important to me. So from the gym owner side, what you can do there is, yeah, like you said, you post content, you do videos, you just give educational things away. You could also say, hey, guys, we're doing a meetup over here at the Whole Foods and we're going to go and we're going to, you know, we're grabbing 20 people that want to go and you just go educating. You walk them through the store. There's a million things you could do. You can offer free workouts at your facility for anybody in the Healthy Living St. Louis group. You can do um, meetups and, and get togethers. And again, you can give away uh, lead magnets and recipe books. And now you're creating a nice, you're basically planting your own seeds. You're creating your own marketing group, or I'm sorry, your own customers. And um, it's, it, I think it's a powerful way to do it. We've done very well with the, with the marketing side one, but I think the same is true. You just got to put a lot of time into it. And that's the truth. Yeah.
Yeah, absolutely. Um, and that's a good point. So many good points. That's why I love having you on the show. In addition to, I just love hanging out with you. Um, um, the other thing I want to touch on, you said it budget, because I think a lot of fitness business owners don't understand marketing budget and how it works because a lot of them are trainers that go into business and they don't understand business. And a lot of trainers don't understand money and how to spend money to make money. And Thomas Plummer talks about that all the time. But so you want to go through that because a lot of guys, a lot of fitness business owners, when they first start out, they don't have a lot of money. So they don't want it, you know, they don't want to spend a thousand dollars on marketing because they're like, well, I don't have any money. What, why am I going to spend a thousand dollars on marketing? Why should they do that? Yeah, well, at the end of the day, marketing 100% agree that it's an investment into your business. So the way that I explain this to a lot of people is your customers have a, a value, right? What is your customer lifetime value is the thing that we say a lot in this industry. What's a client worth to your business? Your, a client is technically an asset. They're worth $5,000, $6,000. The way you find that out in the really simplest formula is... Your average monthly dues, let's just call it dues and not profit center revenue and any of that other stuff, times the amount of, on average, that people stay with you, okay? Maybe you've got five memberships, the average is $225 and they stay with you 10 months. You know, it's $2,250 is worth the client lifetime value is. Now, if, now, if you could spend $1,000 and you can get five clients that are worth $2,250 each, would you do it? Well, yeah, it's an investment. I just spent $1,000 and I made $10,000, $11,000, $12,000 from that $1,000 investment. Now, the problem is a lot of times that investment doesn't realize itself until 12 months, 10 months, 12 months down the road. Do you have that kind of time? This is a business. This is not a hobby. You should have a, a capital to run your business, and that includes marketing spend. You should absolutely have it. Unfortunately, the mindset of the trainer girl and guy is let me go spend two thousand dollars on this kettlebell certification because they think that's going to bring in clients. Now your your clients don't care about that. They want to get you know what I mean. They want to know that they can feel better, move better. Not the fact that you got some initial with uh, you know kettlebell certification or TRX certificate, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Take that two thousand, five thousand dollars, whatever you're going to spend on it. Go put it into marketing, grow your business, and then turn go get that. TRX certification, whatever it is. Nothing against those guys. I'm just saying the mindset of the trainer or business owner, just it's not like a, you know, a straight line. There's a lot of times that people get a little confused on how to spend the money in the business. Yeah, I, I agree with you 100%. Um, that, and that's a great point because that's the lifeblood of your business. Like you said, a lot of trainers put the cart before the horse when it comes to that. And then they wind up going out of business. Yeah. So, so the other thing we, we covered a lot um, and it, for me, looking at it from a fitness business owner, it can be overwhelming because you're talking about tactics versus strategies. You're talking about your social media strategy, your Google strategy, your local business, you know, um, mm -hmm. uh, tactic, uh, your internal tactic, how you handle leads, how you convert them all of that stuff. So a lot of that is overwhelming for a lot of fitness business owners and they don't have the fucking time to spend coordinating all of that. So what do they do? I know that you created something specifically mm -hmm. for that. Yes, I did. Um, one second though and let me plug this computer in because i just noticed it's nine percent do we have time oh, okay to do that yeah that, absolutely or? go ahead okay uh, yeah sorry. <laughs> amateur hour amateur yeah. hour hold on. Let's okay hold on you, keep talking, you, buddy. Just... You, you guys get to see how big tim is when he gets up and gets down the guy's a monstrosity and you get to see his dope podcast studio that he just built his sound wall and his joe rogan mic and headphones look at those guns look at those pecs <laughs> this thing takes a lot of power buddy yeah 
yeah. So I'm, just, I'm just gonna do a standing. I'm gonna finish okay. standing here. All right. Yeah. And he's and he's back. So I'm back. Yeah, we talked about the overall the overwhelming task from a time standpoint and from a mental bandwidth standpoint of putting all of these tactics together in an overall strategy. And then you um and so you've dealt with that a lot because that's what you do. You deal with fitness business owners. So walk us through that. Right. Good point. So one of the things that we've done is we've taken all the different, you know, tactics that have grown businesses, uh, you know, not just our business, but um, uh, our clients business and, and people that we respect in the industry, like you said, the STS, right in the very beginning, we share stuff all the time in that group, right? And We've taken all of that and we've created a, an annual marketing calendar. We break it up into quarters and we give you all the assets for you to create your own campaigns for people that just don't have the, the, the means to outsource a lot of their marketing efforts. Do it yourself. I want to teach you how to do it. We've created trainings on how to run ads and how to create uh, email campaigns and, and using different uh, you know, funnel strategies and things like that. We put it all into our GPS to help business owners just be able to do it themselves. You know, for 497 bucks a month, they've got over 50 strategies that get time released over the year, plus a marketing calendar that when they use, when to use it. So you never have to wonder what are we doing this month for leads? What are we doing next month for customers? We always give you the current quarter as well as the next quarter. You're always three or four months ahead at all times. And we just give you the stuff to use and run yourself. Uh, and that way you can get with your team, you can pull up the GPS, you can look at the strategies, you can create a plan. Nothing worse than not knowing what you're going to do to get clients next month. There's there's nothing worse Then your shotgun approach. And then you're just like, buy my stuff. Everything's on sale just to try to get people in. And that's that's what we're trying to help the industry to get become better. Yeah. And I know. So, yeah. And I know some listeners may think of this as a shameless plug, but I, I'm going back to what you were saying earlier about educating the fitness business owner about there's a lot of bullshit out there. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that you can waste your money on and not get anything in return, or they get you all these crappy leads that you don't know what to do with or aren't qualified leads or, um, or, you know, they just don't work in your market or your demographic and you wind up spending all this money and then you get nothing for it. Uh, I know that what you do works because it's worked for me. It's worked for a lot of guys in the STS and it's legit. You're a legit guy. So for basically 500 bucks a month, you said 497 a month. Mm -hmm. um, what is the average rate of return? Because I know we had I had Aaron Manis on the show. Yeah. And I know he uses that GPS product um, and he's had phenomenal results. So what tell them what kind of. Um, return on investment they can expect from that 497 a month spend yeah absolutely well just think about what a client's worth to you like right, let's just say it was 2500 dollars, right mm -hmm. you need two and a half clients to pay for an entire year worth of the gps right two and a half clients you can get two and a half clients on one strategy that's going to take you five minutes one of our 10 word emails or um, a, a client win back appreciation event or any of the strategies, I mean, literally your return on investment, it's, I don't know, it could be anywhere from 5x to 5,000x, right? And so it's really up to the owner on how they utilize what's in there and how fast they want to run. Like Aaron Manis, gosh, I mean, he's already made forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 from a couple months worth of GPS. He did pay for it in full, whatever. We had a, we had a deal in Black Friday. So he spent whatever, five grand, but he's made 40 grand, 35, 40 grand. So the return on investment is up to how hard you want to run. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Cause it all comes down to implementation uh, for sure. Um, okay. It's good to know. So, and what does a uh, growth plan, gro <laughs> what am I saying? What does GPS yeah. stand, stand, stand yeah. for? That's for growth plan strategy. Because okay. Because that's really what it is. How are you yeah. going to, you know, it's a growth plan strategy. And so, uh, you know, that's just a play on an acronym or whatever, but it's uh, something that we don't, we're, we're adding to it constantly. So for instance, we did an ultimate funnel workshop. Anybody that was in our GPS, that was a five week workshop. Anybody that was already a member of GPS got that for free. We did the ultimate rewards program 
uh, training, which is a workshop. We gave everybody in that for free. We gave everybody that was a GPS. So we're continuously adding to that. We just put in three new internal marketing strategies in this last week. They just get added over time as, as we're, we're constantly testing things. Uh, and we just add it to there. So to so being a member is, is has its benefits as far as, you know, always having the latest and greatest uh, strategies in there. Nice. Nice. And then also know that, I mean, you're doing big things, brother, uh, big things. You just came out with a book. Yeah, buddy. Tell us about that. Yeah. Built to grow. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. So that's you, need, that's you want, you want to grab a copy and do the little face thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's right here. I got it. Hold okay. On. Hold on. <laughs> Right. Somebody did this when they first bought the book. Right. They just let me see if I can do it. Hold on. There you go. This is, hard. this is harder than I thought. Anyways, this is uh this is the book built to grow. Uh-huh. And uh basically it's it's you know lessons and stories on on my you know coming up into the fitness industry, how I became a marketer, how I was able to take a failing business model and turn it around and be able to scale out of that business and into another facility in, in a matter of like five years when, when we were about to close our doors talks about building a team having core values it's really for the gym owner not just the gym owner starting out but the gym owner that's looking to to grow right so a lot of times we get in this business and we forget some of the principles that that got us here uh and this book's going to remind you guys of that so you can get this at uh am i allowed to plug this yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's real easy. TimLionsBook.com. It will get you this book. Uh, it's free plus shipping. You just pay for shipping. We'll sh we'll ship it out to you. We ship out twice a week, so we get it to you within a couple days. And that's uh, that's the built to grow. And then we just turn into uh, we turn it into a podcast now. So we have a podcast that just literally comes out tomorrow. Uh, we've got our first three episodes dropping tomorrow. Built to grow podcast. And once we get through. In about 12, 15 episodes, we're going to start bringing in a guest, and I'll have you on there as a as a guest. I think you're going to come to town. You can come into the, the Joe Rogan Studios here. Yeah, absolutely. I'm looking forward to it. Yep. Yeah, I'm going to I'm I'm going to need a perspective man, uh, manipulator because if I sit next to you, I'm going to look like a fucking uh, a Somalian runner, marathon runner. <laughs> <laughs> So, <laughs> right, yeah. Ethiopian, so you know, marathon yeah. runner. So I need, I need a perspective manipulator when I come in the studio. Okay. All I'll right. So, in here. yeah. So, uh, take us through that, like built to grow, because um, I know you got the book and you got the podcast. So, what are some of the key points that a, a business owner, fitness business owner, needs to know in order to to make sure that their business is built? to grow because a lot of times it's like restaurants, right? They open up and then they get this rush and they're not set up to handle it and shit gets fucked up and then it winds up hurting them down the road, all of that stuff. So you want to cover that? Yeah. Number one, uh, a lot of business owners feel like they are a business owner, but truly they're self-employed. And the, the biggest difference is like, Hey, if you're self-employed and again, nothing wrong with this, it just means that you have to be personally involved in the business for it to operate. Meaning you have to train clients or you have to, you know, make the sales, you have to do the marketing, whatever, which is totally cool. Not the business that I want to be in because, uh, you know, I want it to be able to work for me, not, not me for it, you know? Mm -hmm. So I've actually removed myself from the business and I only have to be here, um, or be involved about four hours a week. If, if that, like I literally could leave for three months and everything would be fine. So how do you build a business that does that for you? That's what we talk about on the podcast. And there's, it's not one thing, right? You know, it's a team, it's having core values, it's having systems and all these things. And we help you kind of identify what it is that you need in your business and, and, and help you get there. I mean, really, that's that's really why I'm doing this podcast. I want to help gym owners win just like you. For me, winning is removing myself from the business. That's considered a win for me. And there's a lot of gym owners that that's a win for them as well. And some that don't ever want to not be in the business. And, there's, you know, and there's everything in between. So that's that's really where we're coming at from this for this podcast yeah and then you cover like each podcast each episode is a chapter in the book yep the first 12 will be right out of the book and then we we jump all around from there there's a lot of cool things we're, we have planned 
Okay. Yep. Awesome. Awesome. Well, that's great. I'm looking forward to coming down there and uh, I'm going to have to do some serious training before I come down there and, uh, and check let's, out let's, the studio. Let's train. Yeah. Let's train while you're here, man. Oh yeah. That's like, that's like me coming down the train with, uh, Ronnie Coleman, you know, lightweight. Um, but, uh, yeah, when you put in like, when you're duct taping plates on the end of dumbbells and shit, uh, just to get more weight. Um, Okay, so let's finish up with um, a couple of questions. You've been on the podcast before. Mm-hmm. You've been in you've been in the business for a long time. So um, both the gym business and the marketing business. So I'm gonna change it up for a little for you a little bit. So um, the thing that I want to ask you is like when it comes to and this could be either the built to grow or from the marketing side. What are the two biggest mistakes you see gym owners making that can drive their business out of business? Well, two two biggest mistakes. Well, mm-hmm. well, one's not investing in marketing and looking at it as totally as an expense. That's that's one thing that will maybe not won't put you out of business, but you're definitely not going to grow, right? If you're not investing in the business. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, there's a million things here, buddy. Um, having having a team okay a lot of times you can only get so far by yourself right Mm -hmm. and you hire people and then you don't trust them to do the job and that's the biggest thing that you need to change your mindset if you're hiring somebody to do a job as long as they they're trained and you trust that person like let them do their job your your employees want to do good like most of them want to do good things and if you keep doing it for them and this, this was something I did a lot. Like I would hire somebody, then I would just, ah, it's easier for me just to do it. And then you, you end up not being able to scale because nobody's, you know, you're doing everybody's job. And so what's the point? So letting your team do their job is huge. It's very huge. When I and did that out of the way, we grew. Yeah. And allowing them to kind of fall on their face a little bit and continue to manage them instead of jumping in and taking over the reins, because then you become the bottleneck in the business. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Let them do their job. Let them learn. Right. Mm-hmm. Here's one takeaway. Uh, and I think every owner uh, leader should, should subscribe to this. Don't get upset. If an employee makes a mistake, only get upset if they don't make a decision, meaning, huh? I like, I like that. I, I will support my staff as, as long as they made a decision, be it wrong, right or wrong. But if they went all in and went 100 miles an hour down the wrong way, I will support them. We'll never get upset. But if they just sat on something and they just come on, guys, like if you, they just don't make a decision, that's why I'll come down on somebody. So let let them like just support them to make decisions. When you allow them to make decisions, you can move. You can move fast and you can move far. In the business. Yeah, I like, like that. Said, yeah, yeah, that's a great takeaway. I'm going to use that. I'm going to steal that. I'm going to give you credit for like two weeks. And yeah. then after that, I'm going to, oh, that's going to be a Jim Adams quote. Uh, <laughs> all right. Standard. Yeah. Right. And then yeah. my next question is when it comes to marketing, um, it's a, it's kind of a multi, it's a layered question. So what has been the biggest change that you've seen recently in marketing that, uh, people need to be aware of and, um, and then how, why is it important for them to seek help with their marketing? Okay. So the biggest change, and I think this is no surprise to anybody, is Facebook's getting really hard to make money on. It's really hard. It's hard to make money. It's hard to generate leads at a lower cost. It still does generate a return, but it's just nothing like it was. Um, so that's the first lesson everybody needs to understand is, is yeah, you can still use it and you should still use it, but be careful and get ready to pivot, especially, especially with the way it shut down just a couple of weeks ago and everybody. So, and that, so that's the biggest thing and the biggest and, takeaway and, is. And then with, along with that, Tim, do you see that change any, do you see it getting worse, better, harder, easier? I'm following a lot of chatter right this is my part of my what i do is is understanding that the trends that's happening right now they're they're pulling away additional targeting resources they're t- they're taking away things they're making it harder 
and harder for marketers to do their job. I mean, really. So kudos to Facebook for making it really easy for anybody to run ads. Kudos. Good job. Uh, they're not making it They're They're making their platform is making it easy for people to run ads. It's harder and harder to get a return on, on your spend. Right. So get into YouTube ads. That'd be my next takeaway, right? Get into YouTube ads and get into Google search again and get into SEO again. If you're not still, if you're not there already, we went all in on SEO about a year ago and we've seen huge, huge ranking increases. We're getting more traffic on our website. Uh, we did the SEO all in about the time we redid our website too. So we made it nice and pretty and we, we have the lead, lead capture all over that. Uh, so that's where we're spending our money. Um, we, we took down our Facebook ads about a week and a half ago, which took everything down. We're reevaluating. We're putting more spin into Google. Uh, and they're also over on YouTube now. So that's, that's our, that's what we're doing. Okay. And then with that in mind, why would you recommend somebody get outside help or at least some kind some kind of consult with their marketing? Well, it's just like somebody trying to go and exercise it themselves, right? So think about your clients walking into your gym, all the information's out there, right? They can go to YouTube and go to a park and they can get in great shape. Why do they come see you? Why do you tell them that they need to see you? It's because you're the expert. You know how to get somebody a result faster than they can get it on their own. The same goes for marketing your business. There's people doing this right now. We do this for gyms. Like you need to seek out an expert that knows what they're doing first, not just a bunch of uh, happy numbers on a spreadsheet, but somebody that understands your business so you can go faster or else you're going to sit there and try to learn everything yourself. Just like that person watching the YouTube videos on their phone out in the park, trying to get do pushups and burpees and stuff. It's the same principle. Gotcha. Okay. And then my last question for you is, um, what were the last three books that you read or podcasts that you listened to? Where do you go to get your personal development? Yeah, I'm in a podcast now. So really some books have been, uh, I used to be the, the book guy all the time. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, I've been in a podcast. So here, here's who I listen to, uh, MF CEO and Infracella. That's from your neck of the woods, St. Louis. Oh Yeah. Yeah, the the uh, supplement solutions guy. Yeah, not that supplement. Yeah, uh, the, uh, the uh, supplement superstore. superstore. Yeah, okay. So he's uh, he, he's a staple on the podcast. Ear earbuds. Um, also, um, uh, and my let and my let and and uh, Andy Priscilla partnered up to create uh, a, a side company. Those guys are, are really driving it home. How how Those do you guys, how do you, how do you how do you spell that? E D that's Ed and then my let M Y L I guess L E T T. Okay. Got it. Okay. Milet. So those guys uh, are pushing, they're pushing really the, the take ownership side of it. Like you, you need to get your ass in gear. It's up to you to make the difference. Those guys push me on that level. Uh, and then when it comes to marketing stuff, I, you know, I listen to digital marketer, perpetual traffic is a really good um, technical, podcast for marketing so it's it's done by digital marketer um you've got a couple of hosts on that and <clears throat> that those are the ones i really listen to the most you know and i'll pop around i'll listen to um another guy smart smart passive income what's his yep. name pat flynn pat flynn I'll, I'll listen to him a little bit uh joe rogan every time he's got some cool guest on there i'll jump on there uh yep. another one here they are a rewire podcast guy named Ryan Stuman. Just, he's just a dude that I know. And, um, he just, you know, gets in your ear about making shit happen kind of guy. Mm -hmm. Then you've got, uh, another friend of mine. Uh, he's not on here. Oh yeah. Here it is. Um, the biz power hour, buddy, Daniel, uh, Daniel Bush is a good dude. He is, um, again, very, very technical. These are going to bore the hell out of you, but these things are exciting for me. Right. Very technical marketer. Uh, he's an agency he's like, uh, as well as me. And I just know him through the great, fine, good dude. Very nice guy out of San Diego. And he basically brings guests on, uh, usually CEOs of big software companies. And they talk about the direction of marketing and uh, communication in the in digital world. You know? Okay. And then uh, give us some books that you've read that you really enjoyed. Gosh, put him on the spot. If 
I looked, uh, I don't know the last book I read. I know that I read uh, Russell Bunch, Brunson's books. I've read, um, oh, here's one that I read. I read this a while ago, but I just reread it. It's called Buying Customers. Buying Customers. That one will put everything in perspective on the whole customer lifetime value and making the asset purchase. That thing is perfect. That's a great, great book for everybody. Okay. In the gym owner world, buying customers. Okay, got it. All right. So all of those links, the links for your book, uh, the link uh, for your podcast, and all these other uh, podcasts in the Buying Customers book will be in the show notes. Just go to trainergym.net. Click on this episode of the podcast and all the links will be right there. And with that in mind, Tim, where can people uh, get in touch with you if they want to find out more, if they want to use your GPS product, all that good stuff? Man, well, you put the GPS product in the show notes. Um, I've got a new website coming out. As far as like right now, it's not live, but by the time this probably gets out there, timlyonsjr.com. That's going to be the personal website uh, where all of my stuff is going to be like my hub. I would hope to see that thing out in about a week. Tim okay. Lyons Jr. Tim Lyons Jr. You know, okay. The guy that owns TimLyons.com won't sell it to me. He says uh, he's, been, he's been sitting on that website for, I think, 15, 17 years, and it has a squiggly drawing like his kid did. It's been up that way for the last 15 years, just sitting there. And he won't sell it. No, I, I told him, I said, hey, man, I'd love to buy this website from you. URL doesn't look like you're doing anything with it. And he goes, well, I actually am planning on doing something with the website. I'm, I've got some music I want to put on there. Okay. All right. You win. It's his name, too. I guess he can have it. So yeah. whatever. <laughs> TimLionsJr.com. Okay. All right. We'll put, we'll put that in the show notes as well. Uh, <laughs> all right, Tim. Uh, it's right. always a pleasure. You heading out to Irvine next month? I'll be there, buddy. I'll see okay. you there and the rest of the STS crew. Absolutely. Okay, good. Well, I'll see you there. Thanks for coming on the show. I really appreciate it, man. This has yeah, been man. great. And I'm looking right. forward to seeing you out in Irvine and then coming down to the, the studio and knocking out that episode. Let's do it, buddy. That'd be All awesome. Right. Okay, All right, thanks. We'll All right, have a good day. All right, bye.